I want to talk about working with artificial intelligence, and I mean working with it as an employee. There's a lot of discussion, a lot of worry about what will happen when artificial intelligence becomes ubiquitous, common, cheap, and effective. Does that give any hope for a human to have a job? Does this eliminate human employees? Does it replace the need for having humans doing things? I will argue very strongly that it does not, that in fact it creates even more jobs, more things for us to do as humans. But it also means that we are going to work with, alongside of, together with AIs, artificial intelligences. And I want to describe maybe what that might be like. So the first thing to understand is that we already work with AIs today. If you have a computer, if you do any kind of a search on a web, you are interacting with an AI. And many people have jobs where searching for something may be part of their job today. So we already have some experience with interacting with an AI, even working alongside of an AI. And in this case, it's just a tool that helps us do our job better. There may be even certain people who could not do their job at all unless they had a search engine. A lot of programmers today, whenever they need help, they actually Google YouTube for the solution. They don't have everything in their head. It's impossible to know all the shortcuts in programming every language. And so they'll constantly, as they're going along, are asking for help. And so they are, in, to a much more extent, in some ways, their job, their tasks, already kind of relies on interacting with an AI. And as we go forward, as we imagine the future, we can kind of imagine that being even more so, where you're doing something difficult, maybe you're a designer, engineer, trying to figure out how to design a new nuclear submarine, or maybe an aircraft that might go to Mars. And there's lots of technical things that you would need to know. And so you have a method, it could be typing, it could be talking, it could be drawing, to interact with an AI that will help you come up with solutions. And so you, right now we, we search with a few phrases and keywords, and that's very limiting. But an AI in the future will be able to take a more complicated kind of a question, a query where we have, well, I want this kinds of things, but I'm not interested in this one over here. And I already know this part, but what about over here? Can, you, can we figure out a way to do that? And the AI would actually be able to generate some responses. Some cases, they would just be questions, I mean, answers to our questions. But other, kinds, other times, they would be maybe possible solutions about, well, here is how people in the past have solved this problem or similar problems. Here are all the existing solutions. That alone would be tremendously useful. So you're just kind of getting a more sophisticated, complex answer. But you're asking, like, how has this been done in the past? Who knows about this? What do we know that, that um, of, what do we know about the ways that this has been solved before? That's something that would be the first step for an AI colleague who is working with this. It's like working with a really, really smart person who could remember all the history and say, well, in the past, here's how this problem was solved. And I think that's one of the first ways that AI, working with AI, would be useful to us. And it's not just in kind of being an engineer, but you might even be trying to repair a, um, maybe you have to weld a broken um, wheel on a tractor. And it's kind of a interesting, it stucks in some ways, maybe a piece is broken off. And you would say, like, imagine you had an old hand, some guy had been around for two generations who had seen it before. He would say, well, that happened before. And when we did that, we, we, we did this over here. You could have the AI do that, even if you were a young person and didn't have that kind of experience, 
the AI over your shoulder would say, here's how that problem, here's how that well, they've welded that in the past. Here's how they fixed that. So that's the kind of the first step, which is kind of giving us sophisticated answers based on the fact that they could go into the history of how people are doing things, how it was mentioned, maybe YouTube clips where they can extract out and watch this and remember this. So that's the first level of assistance working with an AI is, is a really smart old timer. The second step would be AIs that were sufficiently clever and creative to actually suggest new solutions. And that is an act of creativity. And a lot of people believe right now, incorrectly I would say, that AIs can't be creative, that machines can't be creative. And this is totally wrong. It turns out that creativity is actually a mechanical process. It's not a spiritual, um, intangible or supernatural uh, process. It's, it's, it's a mechanical process. It can be programmed we will be able to program creativity into machines. The thing about that creativity is, is that it's not going to be like human creativity. Um, the kind of answers that an AI will come up with, answers meaning the kind of solutions, the kind of, the kind of creativity, will always be a little different than humans because the mechanics are different. So it's like um, it's like painting. If you, if you were if you were to paint a painting, a lot of the painting is on is dependent on the texture and the movements of your hand. And so you could have a robot paint, but the strokes are always going to be a little different than a human. And so it will be a painting. It will have strokes, but the mechanism, the nature of the arm that you use, the flexibility of the joints will all dictate the kind of the texture of that painting. And so it might be hard for a human to actually imitate the robot painting and it would be hard for the robot to imitate exactly how a human paints. They're both are painting and they both can be interesting, they both can be great, but they're just going to be a little different. And that's the whole point about creativity in the AI world is that it will be present, it will be real, but it's going to be a little different, a little off. It's just not going to come. And that, by the way, as I have said many times, is this main benefit. The main benefit of the fact that the AIs have a different kind of creativity is that it's different. Because being different, thinking different, having a different idea is the real engine of innovation and art and discovery. And they are going to help us, these colleagues, these AI assistants, these AI co-workers are going to help us arrive at different answers, different ideas, because they have a little difference. So we're going to rely on them to be different. If we wanted to think like a human, we would work with other humans, and which we do. But we're also going to work with these other aliens who have a slightly different kind of creativity. But it is creative. They will come up with novel things. We've seen already... Um, in art, in music, that they can make paintings, they can make images from nothing, they can invent music from nothing, they can write words on a story from nothing, but we recognize them that they're probably not being written by a human, but that can make them interesting for that reason, because they're just a little different. The AlphaGo, Go player, the chess players, are playing and beating humans, but they're not playing in the same way. They're a different kind of creativity. And the chess masters and the go masters are learning from the AI to play their chess a little different. They become better players because they're now understanding, oh, there's a whole different way of playing the game that this AI is showing us how to play. And that would be the same thing with painting and, and creativity and spreadsheets, anything we do. Well, the AIs have a little different way of doing it. They can be creative and they can come up with it, but that solution is like, hmm, we would have never thought about that. And that's going to be the beauty of working with these. Um, sometimes, you know, when we're doing accounting, we want everything to be reliable. We don't want them to come up with a different answer, but they could come up with a different way of accounting, which could be valuable. So 
they are going to be creative. They can be clever. They can come up with a new insight that didn't exist before. And that's the second level of working with AIs is that they are going to be able to contribute in a real way as part of a team. It's like you're not going to rely just on what the AI comes up with. It's like any kind of a team. One person has an idea, another person may think this, they have a better idea, and then you come up with a third idea that actually works. And so in the same way that AIs will have ideas and suggestions, drafts, plans, um, prototypes that might be interesting but not work, or they might work, but they are going to be part of a mix of things. And so they will become a member, another option, another avenue. Now, there are cases in which the AI wants to do everything that's rote. So, so we could imagine something where we have a continual basis of little things, and they have to make a decision. And they have to weigh many different options, and it's boring for a human. And so we have an AI who's actually going to make some decisions about things, like a common thing is whether somebody should get a loan or not, or a mortgage or not. They weigh all the different variables, and then they come up and say yes or no. And so... Um, in that sense, that AI is, is replacing something, part of what a mortgage broker used to do. But it, it's a part of maybe what a mortgage broker does that they aren't really that happy to do. It's complicated. There's lots of numbers. You have to keep track. You have to be exact. You can make a mistake. And there are probably very few mortgage brokers who really, really enjoy doing that every day, all day long. And that's the kind of a task that we would give to an AI. And so, in that sense, the AI is doing this repetitious thing in a very meticulous way, better than a human, not being bored. But, of course, we've given that AI some decision power. And so, we, that AI will be biased in some way. They're all biased. Everybody's biased. Um, what we want to do is we kind of want to reveal that. And if there are biases that we don't like, we have to find some way to overcome those, program that in. And so um, uh, there are certain tasks that we do that will certainly be taken away by AIs that will never come back. Um, but that, that only kind of modifies what it is that we humans do. So all that we do is, is a bundle of different tasks, and some of those tasks can be done with AI. And good riddance, we're, we're happy to have them take it over. Um, other tasks or be new tasks for us that we get because we've been liberated from these other tasks that we've given to the AIs. And so I think the kind of journey that we're going to be on is constantly um, discovering new things that we want to do with the help of the AIs who are, may be able to be, help us discover things. And then we do them for a while, maybe for six months or something, and we decide, oh my gosh, I'm, not, I'm now bored about that part. I'm going to give this to my AI friend, and they're going to take over doing this repetitious stuff. And I can go and think about the next thing. So I described it kind of in a, uh, as a white-collar worker, but this also applies to even physical things to the extent that we can give AI's bodies, which is what we call a robot. And we have to understand that most robots are not like mobile. They're just kind of... They're usually planted somewhere. They're, they're doing something, on, again, on a repetitious basis. Maybe So we can certainly imagine fast food cooking being robotic. They don't have to move around. They could just be arms uh, stationed on a workstation somewhere. But they certainly could be flipping hamburgers and packaging up and wrapping and stuff, sending it out. And again, that's the kind of a job that most humans really don't want to be doing. And so um, we should be glad. And even counting the money up front and taking an order, that's also something that really humans shouldn't be doing. The humans working at the restaurant, of course, will be taking care of the robots, making sure they're working. And when they break, it's a very difficult thing to fix them. They will be taking care of the, what we call a, a ranny, a robot nanny, where it's just taking care of the robots. And they will also be working on things like, what's the next thing that should be sold in this store? Or how can we make that experience of walking in better? Um, so there are, there will still be new possibilities for humans to do, to work at, 
that will be enabled by the fact that you have the burgers being flipped by a robot, AI. That's, again, a job that most of us would be happy to take away from a human and give to a robot. I think um, physical, there are some physical things like plumbing, repairing plumbing, that are right now actually so complicated, so unique, um, there's very little repetition involved, that plumbers who are already very well paid might become some of the highest paid people because only a human will be able to do that for the foreseeable future. And the plumber, too, may working with AI digital assistants who can help with particular problems about maybe they uncover some material they've never seen before or some history, historical aspect or figure out where this pipe goes to by looking at the county blueprints. Um, there are many ways in which even a, a human plumber who may be very well paid will be using AI digital assistants to assist him or her in their job as they try to figure out how this old system worked and how to repair it. What are some of the possibilities? Where can I buy this kind of material in this dimension? The AI system could be able to help, could then find out where it is and purchase it for them and have it delivered right there while they're working. So there's, so I can't think of really any job or any occupation that would not be able to be assisted by having cheap, ubiquitous minds working with you as you try and uh, make something happen. So I think um, learning to work with AIs and robots will become a very huge asset for a future employee. Being able to, just like someone who is at ease navigating through the web, who's a power user, can do searching very fast, who understands how the web works, who knows how to find the right information quickly. They are become an asset to a company. So in the future will people who are at ease working with an AI or multiple AIs. They're at ease interfacing with them and asking them questions. And they have an intuitive sense of whether to rely on them or not. They enjoy the kind of creativity that an AI is capable of and they can kind of appreciate its value and they can extract the maximum from that without being weirded out by it, those are the kind of people that are going to be paid more. So the, what I would say is that you'll be paid in the future um, by how well you work with these AI agents. Just like we often pay people how well they work with other people, now it's going to be how well do you work with other people and how well do you work with AIs. I, so I think the vision that I have of the future in work and employment is a co-working, is, is a being partners and using them as, a, as not just an assistant, but as a team member. So that is what I think the future of AI and employment is, is, is a team effort.